Hello everyone, welcome to class A31. Our subject is about business and transfer taxes. And the first topic to be tackled in this subject is the consumption taxes. I will cover this session, the introduction to consumption taxes, consumption tax on importation, and consumption tax to sales and receipts. For us to better understand the I provided the learning objectives as our learning guide. Our objectives are as follows. Be able to explain consumption taxes as applicable in the Philippine tax laws and to identify consumption taxes that is applicable to different types of taxpayers. First, let's discuss the definition of consumption. When you say consumption, it refers to the acquisition or utilization of goods or services by any person. In this utilization, can be either by way of purchase, it can be a purchase of goods or services, by way of exchange or a barter, or any other means of utilization. Accordingly, this utilization is subject to tax called consumption the rationale of consumption taxes are as follows. Savings formation, rationalization of benefit received theory, and the wealth redistribution to society. In savings formation, the more consumption a person consumes, the lesser sa savings left. See the example presented in my PowerPoint. So in here, for income less consumption equals to savings. So, for example, number one, for income of 100 pesos, less 100 pesos consumption equals to zero savings. For example, number two, income of 100 pesos, less consumption of 80 pesos equals to 20 pesos savings. So, the government promotes savings. That's why the higher consumption consumed, the higher the tax imposed to a certain taxpayer. In rationalization of benefit received theory. The explanation is that everyone in the state is receiving benefit benefits from the government. Hence, everyone shall be taxed while the rationale in wealth redistribution to society is that those rich individuals will incur higher consumption because they have the higher income level. Therefore, they will incur higher consumption taxes and the government collects higher taxes from rich taxpayer. Now let's differentiate the income tax and consumption tax. The nature of income tax is a tax upon receipt of income. Example is compensation and salary received. While consumption tax is a tax upon usage of income or capital, the spending. The scope in theory of income tax, is a tax to the capable, while in consumption tax, is a tax to all. The theory basis of income tax is the ability to pay theory. As a professional, I have the ability to earn income by providing, by providing professional service and in return, they pay me for the service I rendered. While in consumption tax, is a theory of benefit received, which already discussed a while ago. Let's proceed to different types of consumption. In here, there are two, two types, the domestic consumption and the foreign consumption. Under domestic consumption, the buyer here is a resident only. So it means the buyer is living within the Philippines and he can either purchase good, goods or service from resident seller or from non-resident seller. If the transaction is from resident seller to resident buyer, that's what we call sales or receipts. While the transaction from non-resident seller to resident buyer, that's what we call import. The second type of consumption is foreign consumption. In here, the buyer is non-resident buyer. And he can either purchase goods or services from resident seller or non-resident seller. 
the transaction from resident seller to non-resident buyer is what we call export, while the transaction from non-resident seller to non-resident buyer practically a transaction that is not within the scope of Philippine taxation. So, under domestic consumption, the sales or receipts under domestic consumption is subject to business tax. While import is subject to but on importation. In this session, we will focus on the domestic consumptions. So, in domestic consumption, we will differentiate the two classification of domestic consumption, the VAT on importation and business tax. The scope of VAT on importation is applied to all imports, whether the buyer is engaged into business or not, while in business tax is applied to all purchases from seller engaged into business only. When we say statutory taxpayer, it is a taxpayer obliged by the government to remit the taxes to the BIR. So the statutory taxpayer under VAT on importation is the buyer. While in business tax, the statutory taxpayer is the seller. On the other hand, the economic taxpayer is the true taxpayer or the one who really pays the actual tax. So in here, the economic taxpayer under the VAT on importation is the buyer itself. Therefore, it is a direct nature of imposition. Because the economic and statutory taxpayer are the same. While in business tax, the economic taxpayer is the buyer. In therefore, an indirect imposition of tax. Last, the basis of tax. Under but on importation, the tax is based on the total purchase cost. So the total purchase multiplied to the required tax rate, while in business tax, it is based on the sales or receipts. So I prepared a practice set for you to apply the concepts we already discussed. You can pause this video for at least 15 seconds for you to answer the illustration, then continue the video to validate whether you got the correct answer. So, the illustration is presented. In, illust in this illustration, Heider Heidenberg Corporation purchased goods from Kiwi Company, who is subject to consumption tax under each of the following independent cases. So, try to answer the illustration. So, let's discuss the following answers. In item number one, the transaction is from resident seller to resident buyer. Therefore, it is subject to business tax. And the statutory taxpayer is the seller. So, it is Kiwi. In item number two, the transaction is from non-resident seller to resident buyer. Therefore, it is subject to but on importation. And the statutory taxpayer is the buyer. So, it is Heidenberg. You can copy the following illustration for review purposes. For importation, it can be either exempt import, import subject to specific tax, and battable importation. In sales, in sales and receipts, it can be either exempt sales or receipts, services subject to a specific percentage tax to be tackled under percentage tax, and bottable sales or receipts. My last slide is all about the basis of exempt consumption. First, it is a human necessity. Example of human necessity is foods, personal clothing. Second, out of the scope of tax. So example, if the transaction is from non-resident seller to non-resident buyer, the tax law is inherently terri territor territorial. So meaning, we cannot impose taxes to those who are not within the juris jurisdiction of the Philippines. Third, tax incentives. The tax incentives and tax holidays for PESA locators, the government encouraged the operations of PESA 
because it will help to increase the foreign currency reserves of the Philippines. As a result, it will increase the purchasing power of peso. Lastly, it is lastly international committee or agreement. If the government enters into international agreement, the Philippine government should bound to follow the agreement. So that's the end of our discussion. Next session, we will discuss the bat on importation, the items of exempt importation, difference between bat on importation for goods and final withholding but for services. And lastly, the, computa the computation of but on importation. Hoping you understand and appreciate the concept of consumption tax. See you next session. Thank you.